Hi, I'm Carmen Geddes with Ten Sisters TV, and today we're going to talk about half square triangles. I like to tease a little bit when I'm teaching a class that in this quilting world, if there is something that has a lot of tutorials and rulers and all sorts of ways to achieve this thing, then at some level it's kind of a pain in the neck and I think half square triangles fall into that category. They are a wonderful uh, little unit in our quilting world that gives us endless possibilities. So we're going to just talk about a few different ways to make half square triangles and hopefully this will give you a little bit of more confidence to go forward with so many great quilts. So I'm going to just talk about First of all, we're going to be making two and a half inch half square triangles. And uh, we'll kind of talk about the formulas for making different sizes a little bit. Um, but for today's demo, this is a two and a half inch half square triangle that will finish at two inches. So the first way is how to make one half square triangle. And we can take two two and a half inch squares and put them right sides together. Now one thing that I like to be aware of when I'm sewing half square triangles is that typically we will have a marking line and we will have a sew line. And so then when you are trying different techniques for half square triangles, be aware of a marked line and a sewing line when you are making these. So for one half square triangle out of two squares. You, you can mark this line, helps you to be a little bit more accurately accurate, but we are going to mark the sew line. We are going to mark and sew from corner to corner. What that gives us is one half square triangle. The downside to this technique is that after you sew your seam, then you're gonna cut a quarter of an inch away from that seam. And so you, the other half of your two squares, um, you can't use again because it's too small. You can save them for a smaller half square triangle, but you're gonna get one half square triangle out of two, two and a half inch squares. So another technique that doesn't take that much more fabric but is very nice and effective, I guess I'll leave this here, is how can we get two half square triangles? And so again we're talking about two and a half inch half square triangles. So my technique for knowing how to get two half square triangles is taking my unfinished size, which is two and a half inches, and I add two seam allowances. So two quarter inch seam allowances, so two and a half inches plus a quarter inch plus a quarter inch is going to mean a, what is that going to mean? It's going to mean a three inch square. <laughs> Don't make me do math. So two and a half inches plus two seam allowances is going to be a three inch square. Now on this technique, we are going to, I didn't mark this line, but you are going to have a line on either side. I'm going to grab a couple little tools here. So if we were doing a marked line, that marked line would be down the center and then you would sew a quarter of an inch away from that line. Now we're going to talk about these little handy dandy rulers here in just a minute that I think help this to be a lot easier. So after you've sewn on either side of that line, then we are going to just cut right down the center on the diagonal in between those two. And now we are going to get two half square triangles. So from going to two and a half inch squares to get just one, we add a half an inch to the size of those squares and we get two half square triangles. So that's that's pretty pretty good use of your fabric to get those half square triangles. So another really great technique is how to get four half square triangles. Now there's a little formula on this on this uh, technique for half square triangles. 
and I'll say it and then we'll have it uh, we'll have it uh, so that you can see it on the video but to get four half square triangles your formula is to take your your cut size so we're going to take 2.5 and we're going to divide it by 0.64 and that gives us 3.9.065 so what that means to me is I'm going to cut four inch squares I'm just going to go up that little tiny bit now I don't really understand that formula but I just know that it works and so the easy thing about this technique is that we're going to put these two four inch squares right sides together and take it over to the sewing machine and I should have marked this with a purple pen but if you can see this you are going to sew a quarter inch seam allowance all around quarter inch from the outside so you're just going to sew a quarter inch seam all around that square and then when you are ready to cut we are going to cut this on the diagonal Let me just move a little bit and we're going to be cutting from corner to corner and we are going to get four half square triangles which is so fun. I love this because there's no marking on this technique. Now let me just say one thing about this technique that um, discourages some quilters from making half square triangles this way is because we've taken that square and we've cut it through the middle on the diagonal. What that means is that these edges are now biased. And so if we were piecing these two together, matching up these two half square triangles and sewing them together, this bias edge could be a problem because it is stretchy, a little bit more or a little bit less stable, I guess I should say. But if you watch any of my other videos, you know that we are piecing on a lightweight foundation. So I actually love this technique for half square triangles because we're putting this down on a foundation that really helps to keep these stable, this technique is great. And so the next one is how to make eight half square triangles. And this is a great technique because a lot of traditional quilt blocks take eight half square triangles. A lot of those star blocks so I love this. It, this technique has been referred to as the magic eight and um, it's a great technique. The formula for this technique is, again, I'm working with two and a half inch half square triangles. So I'm gonna say two and a half plus two and a half equals five inches. And then I'm going to add a seven eighths of an inch. Now, if you know me, you know I am not a seven, I am not a seven eighths inch person. And so I just round that number up to six inch squares. So I'm going to go with six inch squares when I want eight two and a half inch half square triangles. So the way that we're going to do this, we're gonna cut out these squares, put them right side together. Now you can mark one of these before you put them right sides together. But we are going to draw a marked line from corner to corner. So you can see my blue line. And then we're going to sew a quarter of an inch away from that line on both sides, okay? So let me give you just one other option. I, I have a different quarter inch seam allowance than you probably have. And so sometimes when I mark a line and I'm sewing a quarter of an inch away from it, I tend to not be as accurate as I would like to be. So this other way uh, is to me, it's more accurate. It's, it's a little bit easier for me to get exactly the size I want. And the way that this works is we are marking our sew line. So instead of drawing a marked line and sewing a quarter of an inch away from it, we are actually marking the sew line. And so a couple ways to do that. You could mark your line and then just add a quarter of an inch using your ruler. You know, just adding a quarter of an inch on either side of all the lines. Or they've got these great little handy dandy rulers. 
I you know, just love all the great notions that we get to have as quilters. I have a couple different types here. They both work great. And basically what these rulers do is there is a, on this ruler there is a printed center line and then the ruler itself is a quarter of an inch on either side of that line. That's how wide this ruler is. So I'm going to just line that up from corner to corner and then I'm just going to mark my lines. The way that this ruler works is the same concept but it has kind of this little space inside and I'm going to use that little space, that little open space of the ruler to visually see the corners of my square and then again when I draw on each side of that ruler that's my quarter inch. So I really like this technique where we are drawing on, we are drawing our sew line. So now this one has already been sewn. Now one thing I really like to do with pretty much all of these techniques is after I have sewn then I like to bring it over to the iron and give it a nice pressing. Sometimes uh, I will press my fabric and use a little bit of starch or best press and but pressing these after they are sewn really kind of helps to set those stitches in really nicely and so now we are going to cut let's give ourselves a little room now this one because we're going to get eight i i kind of like to visually think of this as a pie even though it is square and we are going to cut i like to cut through the square where I do not have a drawn line. And the reason for that is I can see my drawn lines and I know where to cut in between them if this kind of comes apart a little bit as I'm cutting. So we're going to line the ruler up to where the, these seams are crisscrossed right here. Or I should be able to just measure my three inch mark depending on how accurately I cut those six inch squares and I'm going to cut through the center. So I'm cutting a plus and now I'm going to cut the X. And the X is basically just from corner to corner or just right in between these two sewn lines. I usually don't necessarily cut backwards this way, so don't do what I do, just do what I say. So now we're going to get eight half square triangles. So this is great. I love this technique. And Let's uh, look at how many fun half square triangles we're getting. Now the last thing I want to show you is I, can you tell that I love tools and gadgets and things, anything that's going to make what we do a little bit easier. And I, uh, a couple years ago, I met an awesome lady, Cheryl, and she has created this wonderful stencil called Quilt in a Flash. We'll have a link to her website in the description of this video. Quilt in a Flash makes these wonderful stencils and uh, these stencils are for half square triangles and so um, this stencil that I've got here is for two and a half inch half square triangles um, I love her system because she goes by finished size on her stencil and this is going to be a two inch finished and so it's printed right on there and I have put kind of the little sandpaper type little sticky grippies on the one side of that and wrote my name on it so I don't lose it. Now I've got my, I've got too many fabrics here. So here's my fabrics. They already are right sides together. This is about a 10 inch square and we can get away with a little bit smaller size on this one but I love this stent. Most of her stencils will fit on 10 inch squares. So this is wonderful if you've got some nice 10 inch stacks of uh, fabric that you want to do some fun patchwork piecing with. So we are going to lay this out. Let me kind of get this a little straighter here. Now if I'm doing a whole bunch of these, I will actually put a piece of the blue painters tape over on the side just to stabilize my stencil so that it doesn't move around. Um, I won't, I'm not gonna do this on just this one. Then we are going to use uh, the, these pounce pads. Now the pounce pad is not what you do with this, it's the name of the powder inside, it's called pounce powder. 
And this one is a white called Miracle Pounce, and I'll show you why. It's a miracle in just a second. And then this one that I use is called Barely Blue. Um, I like the Barely Blue because it's just barely blue, and it's just a lighter. This is one that I would use on anything that's too light for this white chalk to show through. So I'm going to use the white one on this one. I'm going to make sure that my stencil is centered. I'm going to try to hold this nice and stable since I don't have the tape. And what you're going to do is kind of a scrub. And I'm going to kind of overdo it on this so we can really see this on the video. Move my hand, get this part, and I am kind of overdoing it. So we'll see how I did. So ta-da! So what this is doing is this is marking our sole line. So this is kind of the same concept that I showed you where we have the rulers, but this is marking our sole line and you can see that this is bigger. And so with the two and a half inch half square triangles, we're going to get 18 of them out of these two squares of fabric. So in my opinion, it takes about the same amount of time as prepping the piece for that magic eight technique, but we're going to get 18. So again, if you're doing a project that's taking a lot, then these stencils are fabulous. So I invite you to go check out Cheryl's website and she's got some good tutorials also to show you. So because we marked our sew line, and I'm hoping that you can see this kind of a light purple. Um, this has already been sewn. And so the first thing that we are going to cut away is this outside line. Do you see how that outside dashed line on the stencil? Now these little dots on the stencil um, were, this is a stencil I've had for a while. She had it where we were going to put a pin in there and so we don't do that anymore. So disregard those little dots, but you're going to trim around the outside right along this dashed line and then we're going to cut this just like we did the Magic 8 where we're cutting through the squares going both directions, so like that plus, and then we're going to cut in between your sew lines all the way through, and we're going to get 18 half square triangles. It's really fun. Great sense of accomplishment. Now the last thing that I want to show you, um, lots of great ways of pressing half square triangles, but I want to just show you the way that I like to do it, and let's get our iron in a good position here. And I probably would typically do this with my bigger iron. Um, now remember that after I had sewn the half square triangle, I gave it a good pressing that kind of sets those seams. And then what I like to do, I do press away uh, from, away towards the dark side. We're gonna press to the dark, go to the dark side, half square triangles. I don't know if you can over press a half square triangle, so I, tend to stagger my half square triangles and um, I just kind of keep moving forward a little bit. You might, you could maybe go the other way, start away from you and work towards you, but this is just kind of my habit. Uh, putting that dark fabric on the top and if you have some steam on your iron, then I love adding steam to this. You just want to be Careful not to do too much ironing. We don't want to stretch anything that might be on the bias. And, oh, I did that one upside down. Let's save that one to do later. Too much talking. Anyway, so that's just a fun way to press half square triangles. So I hope this takes a little bit of the fear out of these if you actually had any and inspires you to go forth with lots and lots of patchwork. Thanks for watching us today on 10 Sisters TV. Um, like our videos if you do like them. We welcome you to subscribe to our YouTube channel. There's a link to my website, which is 10sisters.com. And thanks so much for coming today.